Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And to all my brothers out here preaching this truth to you, I say Shalom. This is Amatazar from the Chicago camp coming back at you again with another lesson entitled Glaring Difference in Beliefs. Well, one of the glaring differences in beliefs that I'd like to point out today in this lesson is the fact that Christianity does not believe in reincarnation. All right. Um, there's lots of holes in Christianity. And the idea of reincarnation completely escapes them, but at, it's at the core of the belief of the hopeful elect, okay? All through our history, all through this Bible, we understand that you come back again, all right? This ain't our first time on this earth, okay? So, again, at the heart of this truth, is reincarnation all right also in christianity they preach a hell doctrine all right these are glaring glaring differences from the truth they preach a hell doctrine and in this lesson today we're just gonna touch on a few things all right it's not gonna be a long lesson so let's first look at the definition of glaring right all right so Definition one, you got shining with or reflecting a harshly bright, harshly bright or brilliant light. OK, so that that's one uh, uh, definition. But I want to focus on definition two. Definition two says very conspicuous or obvious. Flagrant. Several glaring errors in spelling synonyms, patent and prominent. OK, so there's some prominent differences in beliefs. There's some obvious or flagrant differences in beliefs when it comes to this book. OK, and the belief. Now, how we got the same book, but we got completely different beliefs. OK, because the Israelites, their belief system. All right. Is completely different from so-called Christianity. So let's get into it. The elect believe in reincarnation. This is Job 19 and 25. Let's listen to what Job says. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see the Most High, whom I shall see for myself and my eyes shall behold and not another though my reins be consumed within me okay so job says hey i'm gonna see the lord this body right here is gonna decay and there's gonna be worms in it he said but in my flesh i shall see the most high so the belief or the understanding is that he was going to live again okay this is 2 Maccabees 7 and 22. If you're not familiar with the second book of Maccabees, you need to get familiar with it. All right. 2 second Ma Maccabees, the sixth chapter, you have the memorial of Eleazar. And 2 uh, Maccabees, the seventh chapter, all right, you have the memorial of the woman and her uh, seven sons. Okay. And both of these center centered around eating swine's flesh okay all right so any of you fools out here thinking that all food is acceptable with prayer and thanksgiving you need to read those okay all right now this is second maccabee 7 and 22 and this mother and her seven sons are facing death all right i mean they're being literally filleted and, and uh they're, they're being filleted and, and and thrown into uh a uh a frying pan all right right in she's she's watching her her children die her sons die but let's listen to what she says second maccabee 7 and 22 she says i cannot tell how ye came into my womb 
For I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless, the creator of the world, that's Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things, will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Okay? So they they died refusing to uh, to eat the abominable swine's flesh. All right? But the faith and the belief of this woman is, hey, we're going to live again. The Lord is going to raise us up. And one of her sons said, we suffer because of our sins. All right. This is Matthew 11 and 11. This, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Salakia. And the violent take it, it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. All right. So here you have Yahweh Shai himself telling you that John the Baptist was Elias. Okay. All right. The scriptures explain death and the grave. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. It talks about what happens when you die. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. So your body decomposes, goes back to the earth, and your spirit goes back to the Most High. All right? Now, it goes back to the Most High until he puts it right back down uh, into the flesh again for you to be born again. All right? Because it's like a circle. Every third and fourth generation, you come back on the earth. All right? This is, this is, this is just the way it is. Psalms 104 and 29, it says, Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou taketh away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Now see, here you got a psalm that's telling you this is, this is what he does. I mean, hey, let's read it again. You know what? And uh, the water to the uh, elder Karataza out of uh, Las Vegas for bringing this scripture out. Um, this is Psalms 104 and 29 again. Thou hidest thy face. They are troubled. Thou takest away their breath. They die and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. So the earth is renewed, okay, in a recycling type of situation, all right, where the Lord takes their breath, and they return to the dust, and then what does he do? He renewest the face of the earth, right? He's bringing them back. The scripture says that the Lord's judgment is like a ring. This is 2nd Ezra 5 and 41. All right. And I said, Behold, O Lord, yet art thou nigh unto them that be reserved to the end. And what shall they do that have been before me? Why is Ezra speaking about people who have died before him? Let me read it again. And as I said, behold, O Lord, yet art thou nigh unto them that be reserved till the end. And what shall they do that have been before me? 
or we that be now, or they that shall come after us. And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring, like as there is no slackness of the last, even so there is no swiftness of the first. So I answered and said, Couldst thou not make those that have been made and be now, and that are to come at once, that thou mightest show thy judgment the sooner? So, Esdras is tired of the suffering. Esdras is trying to find out how come we all just can't get judged at the same time. Why are we? Why? Why do we have to wait? for people to come back why come we just can't get judged <laughs> all right so the lord explained that the earth can't hold everybody at the same time just like a woman who's had 10 children she can't give birth to all the kids at the same time right it's got to be one at a time all right so the judgment is like a ring. This is Tobit 13 and 1. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be the Most High that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. Here we go. The point. For he doth scourge and have mercy. He leadeth down to hell, which is the grave, and bringeth up again. What? What? When you die, you die. How is it that you are being brought up again? We just got through reading all these precepts that explains how his judgment is. Okay? Let me read it again. Tobit 13 and 1. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be the Most High that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. For he doth scourge and have mercy. He lead it down to hell and bring it up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Over and over, over and over. You got these scriptures, these precepts that explain that you die and you come back again. You die and you come back again. All right. These are glaring, glaring differences in the belief of the Christian and the belief of the hopeful elect. Job 3 and 11. Now, this is, if you're familiar with the book of Job, okay, Job didn't know what was going on, okay? He he just was suffering, all right? But the Lord was testing Job, all right? So, Job cursed the day of his birth. So, now, he's going to explain, okay, about death. And how at least if he would have been hit, if he would have died, he wouldn't be going through this suffering. All right. So that this cuts the hell doctrine. All right. Job 3 and 11. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me or why the beast, the breast that I that I should suck? Salak. For now, should I have lain still? And been quiet. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. That cuts that hell doctrine. With kings and counselors of the earth. Which built desolate places for themselves. Or with priests, princes that had gold. Who filled their houses with silver. Or as a hidden untimely birth. I had not been. As infants which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling. And there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and the great are there, and the servant is free from his master. Okay? Now this doesn't... See, this right here is saying that everybody is in the same place. The small and the great are there. And everyone is at rest. All right. And so this last example in conclusion, I want to bring out, uh, I want to say uh, the water to uh, Elder uh, Manata Zagba over there in South Carolina. 
All right. Appreciate you, brother. And uh, of course, we appreciate the work that you do. All right. We we listening and we watching. All right. So I want to I want to bring this out. This is something that he brought out in the lesson, which which was uh, powerful. Now, Saul, we know was wicked. All right. And Samuel was righteous. All right. But both in death are going to the same place. So in this example, when the Lord stopped dealing with Saul, Saul went, you know, to consult a familiar spirit. Right. So he went to a witch to try to raise up and communicate with with Samuel from the grave. <laughs> All right. So. He disturbed Samuel in his rest because the Lord wasn't dealing with him no more. Was like, he's so wicked. He went through other means, other means. So Samuel was like, what is you doing? <laughs> Why are you bothering me, basically, right? And so uh, Saul, he, he didn't know what else what else to do in his mind, okay? But he was on some old crazy shit, right? So he, he goes and, and, and gets a witch to bring him up. And look at what Samuel says. All right? He says, moreover, this is 1 Samuel 28 and 19. Moreover, Yahweh will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Where, where is Samuel? He's in the grave. He said, tomorrow thou and thy sons. All right. He says, uh, tomorrow thou, tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Yahweh also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. All right. Now, we know for a fact that Saul was being wicked. Okay. Saul was being wicked. And Samuel, we know, was righteous. But Samuel said, what did he say? He said, tomorrow you're going to be with me. All right. So, uh, so Saul ended up getting killed. All right. Or he ended up dying. All right. And then um, and his sons. And so they were with Samuel, not in a burning hell. OK, not in the burning hell. All right. So this has been uh, just a quick lesson. Uh, glaring differences in beliefs. All right. The elect believe in reincarnation. I pray that this lesson has been edifying. Until the next one, I want to say Shalom.